Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about the package manager that's used on Debian-like systems, so things like, you know, Debian or Ubuntu or other derivative Linux flavors. Uh, and I'm going to talk you through the commands that I use the most often, and so hopefully this will, you know, show you some cool things about how you might use apt and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, let's jump into it. So the first thing that I want to talk about is there are two tools that we're going to be talking about today. One of them is just called apt, and the other one is called apt-git. And uh, <laughs> for the most part, they are exactly the same tool. However, you should prefer to use apt for command line interface. So like if you're, if you're just like tapping away on a terminal, uh, use apt, it will be slightly better. Uh, it, you know, has some some bells and whistles that make it, you know, like it has progr progr uh, progress bars and colors and some other stuff like that. Uh, but if you're writing scripts, you should always use apt-get. Uh, and this is because apt-get has a more stable interface. Uh, it also has, you know, as you can see from here, slightly more commands than apt does, uh, or at least it <laughs> lists slightly more in the help. Um, but generally you should prefer apt-get for scripts. And this includes like Docker files or other stuff like that. Um, but yeah, let's get started with the very first command that we're going to be using today, which is apt update. And the way apt-get works, I'm actually going to run this because it's going to take a long time. Uh, oh, <laughs> right, we need to sudo apt update because, um, <laughs> of course, we're we're working with system packages, so we need to actually update them. Um, but what apt update, what apt update does, or at least the way apt works, is you download a set of metadata to your uh, hard disk, or I guess <laughs> SSD or whatever whatever disk you're working on today. Um, and that metadata describes all of the packages in the uh, package archives that you're reading from. So you can see here that when I ran, ran apt update and uh, downloaded stuff from, you know, from Docker, even from VS Code, uh, as well as all of the, oops, all of the, oh wait, is that the right size? No, off by one. <laughs> Including all of the Ubuntu package updates. So you can see like we downloaded, you know, security metadata as well as backports and updates and all the other packages that you would get there. And uh, after you've run apt update, all of the commands work off of that metadata. So like all of the package dependencies and versions and other stuff are all included there. Uh, the next command that we're going to talk about today is apt install. This is if you want to install a particular package. This is probably the most important command that you run. Oh, I guess another thing about apt update is you really only need to run it, you know, like once a day or so. Uh, but generally, you should run it before you install new packages so that you're dealing with up-to-date metadata. Um, otherwise, you might see some weird errors about out-of-date metadata, uh, especially with security packages because they tend to delete security packages when they upgrade them instead of leaving the old package around. Uh, but yeah, let's install some package. Uh, how about Emacs? <laughs> that seems like a package. Oh, again, we need sudo on this uh, because we're, we're changing our actual system. So you need to sudo apt install Emacs. Oh, <laughs> and I didn't mention this cool little thing. Uh, bang bang is a special expansion. It expands to the entire previous command. So instead of you know, instead of write, writing out sudo apt get install Emacs no x again, I can just do sudo bang bang. Um, <clears throat> by default, apt is interactive, so it'll ask you, like, are you sure you want to do this? And we're going to say yes here. Uh, and then it will download and install those packages. So you can see here's the progress bar that I was talking about before, where apt-get would not give you a progress bar that looks like that. Um, so that's installing a package. The other thing that you would, uh, so that the opposite of installing a package is uninstalling a package. Um, there are several ways to uninstall a package. I prefer to use purge. Uh, so there's remove and purge. Remove will remove just the installed package part, but it'll leave behind any configuration that you had of that package. Um, so say you modified like Etsy, Emacs, I don't know, there's probably some Emacs RC in Etsy or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so remove would leave that modification behind, uh, but purge is going to remove all the configuration files. I tend to prefer purge because, you know, if I'm removing a package, I probably don't care about its configuration anymore. Um, so you can do sudo apt purge emacs no x because i don't use emacs i don't need emacs <laughs> um and that'll that'll remove the package from your system now one thing that to note here is that uh when we installed emacs up here 
It actually installed a bunch of other packages as well because this is what Emacs NoX depended on. So it's installed Emacs bin common, Emacs common, and Emacs EL. And you'll notice when I uninstalled, it only uninstalled this one package and didn't uninstall all those other ones. Um, and usually apt will say something like, uh, there are several packages, oh, I guess it didn't say it here. Um, but there are other packages that are still installed that I no longer need. And we're gonna use another command that will remove those. And that's apt auto remove, and I pass dash dash purge here. Uh, again, this is the same purge versus remove uh, deal here. So if you run apt auto remove dash dash purge, again, we need sudo. Man, how many times am I going to forget this in, in this um, <laughs> video? Uh, I guess the reason that I forget sudo is usually when I'm playing with apt, I'm using docker. And so you know, I'm already the root user and I don't need to use sudo there. Um, but, you know, I use, I use different methodologies to install my packages. So I use a configuration management system, which I'll link a video in below about, uh, that setup. But anyway, the auto remove dash dash purge, you can see that it took the three packages that were dependent on by Emacs, no X and purged those. Um, okay. So that's most of the apt commands that I use. There's also, you know, other ones for upgrading and downgrading packages, um, and installing particular versions, but I think those what, three or four commands are the most common ones that I use. Um, so let's talk about some related commands. So not exactly apt, but we're going to be talking about dpackage, which is the underlying packaging command that apt uses to do, well, I guess, does it, does it use it anymore? I don't remember how it works anymore. Um, but dpackage is kind of how you used to manage packages, uh, and it's kind of the low-level Debian tooling. But I find that some of the commands from it are actually pretty useful for doing like high level stuff. Um, so the first one we're going to be talking about is dpackage little l. Uh, this will list all of the packages that are currently installed on your system. Uh, now there's, you know, several thousand installed on my system. Um, and you can see like kind of how it produces the output here. I guess it's not several thousand because there's a header up here. Uh, but I often use this to see like, is something installed? So if I wanted to say like dpackage dash l grep emacs, is emacs installed? Um, and what? <laughs> I don't know why this package is installed. What is emacs in common? Uh, is this something to do with emacs or is this uh, some other thing? Um, and actually we can use another command that I was gonna talk about later to figure out why this package is installed. So we can do aptitude why this package and aptitude is a related tool to apt. You can actually, you actually need to install it. Uh, apparently Emacs in common, maybe it has nothing to do with Emacs. <laughs> Let's show another uh, command. App cache show this Emacs in common. Uh, this package contains code that is needed by all of the Emacs packages. It will be automatically installed when needed. So my guess is I don't actually need this. Uh, although apparently, well, <laughs> this dictionary needs this package. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this can kind of show you why something is installed and this will show you information about the package itself. Um, so that's dpackage-l uh, and kind of how I use it a little bit. There's also dpackage-l, uh, which will take a package. Let's, you know, just take Emacs in common, for example. And this will show you the list of files that are provided by this package. Um, and well, and directories. So you can see most of them will always contain like their entire directory tree as this list here. Um, but you can see like there's some, you know, change logs and some random files that don't actually seem that useful. But anyway, these are the pa the files that are provided by this. You could also do something like dpackage l, uh, you know, python 3.9 dash dev, for instance, and you can see that. Uh, the dev package actually doesn't install that much. It just installs some documentation. It's mostly a meta package for libpython dev. But anyway, that's dpackage dash capital L. Uh, and I think the last one that I wanted to show is dpackage dash capital S, which is kind of the opposite of this dash, L, dash capital L. Uh, dash capital S will search a package for something that provides a particular file. So let's say, you know, uh, we wanted to figure out what file or what package provides user bin Python 3.9. I, of course, know which one this is, um, but <laughs> we can use dpackage dash capital S and it'll tell us that Python 3.9 minimal provides that. Um, you can also do like 
user lib python 3.9 and this actually has many packages that provide stuff in this directory so you can see like lib python 3.9 standard lib minimal python 3.9 vm etc all of these produce files that will end up in this directory so you can use uh, dpackage to search for things that provide stuff like that but anyway i think that's most of the uh apt stuff that I use and hopefully these commands are useful to you and maybe you've learned something new uh, but if you have additional stuff that you want me to explain leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms but thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one